Right, borders and frames in Snapseed. Why do we bother putting a border around the photograph? Well, there are two reasons for it. Uh, one is psychological. It's saying to the viewer, I'm quite proud of this. I've made an effort. I've finished it off. And the other one is aesthetic. If we have a look at the picture in front of us, we can see it is a couple of flowers on a white background. And it's shown here against a slightly grey background, so it stands out. Now imagine if this was posted to Facebook, which uses a white background, or you tried to print it on some white paper, uh, you wouldn't know where the uh, picture ended and the uh, background began. So we need to find a way of differentiating between the two. Now, uh, Snapseed provides some very simple tools to do this. And if we go into Tools, and we look down towards the bottom, we'll find frames. And here we have, I think there's 22 of them all together, although some of them are very similar. There's a white one. I mean, that's a waste of time with a picture like this. Uh, even the curved ones, you can't really see where they are. Now, this one's got a little bit of a, of a pattern, but nothing very much. For a picture of the white background like this, it's better off to use a, a, a black frame. We Unfortunately, we can't have any other colors. It's just white or black. Now you'll see it says frame width minus 10, minus because it's actually inside the image. And we could alter that width by running our finger left to right to make it bigger, or right to left to make it smaller. So if we just take it right back to about there, and if we're happy with that, we click on the tick, and there we go. And that just differentiates it from the background, makes it look a bit more loved and cared for. If we go back into frames, and have another look at these black ones, again, there's all sorts of things we can choose from. Grungy ones, and plain ones. But let's just try something a little bit different. If we go back to this one and we make it a little bit larger, you have to be a little bit careful at the bottom because we don't want to encroach on the flower and we accept that. Then we can go back into frames again. This time we'll pick a white one and again, we can make it bigger or smaller. I just want a very, very thin line round. How about that? Okay, that's fine. And then finally, back into frames again, and this time for another black one. And again, a nice thin line around that. And bingo. Quite a fancy little frame we've made from some very simple tools. But as I mentioned before, we do have a problem in that all these frames come inside the image and therefore, unless you've got quite a bit of space around the main subject, it's going to start encroaching on the picture itself. So we need to find a way around that. Let's start again. This time, instead of using frames, we'll, use, we'll go to the top and we'll find expand. Now, if we look down here, we see we've got three choices, smart, white, and black. And we'll, we'll use all of them before we finished. But we'll start off with black. Now, in order to make it bigger or smaller, we have to pinch with two fingers, something I can't actually do with a mouse. So I've got to have to do that with the fingers and just pinch it out very, very slightly like that. And we'll OK that. So now we've got our thin black line around the image. And as you see, we haven't actually encroached on that, uh, on that flower at all. But we needn't leave it there. We can really go to town. Let's go back into Tools, Expand. And this time we'll click on the white. And we will make that a bit wider. There you go. So now we, we're recreating what we had before in as much as we've got a black line and a white line. Now we could actually go back to the black again uh, in expand, but uh, there's no need. We've now got plenty of space. We can go into frames, pick our black frame, and then just thin that right down to a nice thin line similar to the other one, except that. 
And as I say, we have now got rather fancy frame and we've left plenty of room between the frame and the main subject area. Now I said before we could expand using black, using white and using smart. The smart isn't all that smart to be honest. If you've got a lovely plain area inside the edge such as say a blue sky or, 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 or like those flowers with a, with a completely white background. Smart looks at the pixels just inside the image and then tries to replicate them outside. And with a, a picture like this, it really wasn't, hasn't got much of a chance of succeeding. However, we can use that to our advantage. So if this time we go to Tools, Expand, and I'm going to start by putting a little black line around the image. So now we're going to go back into Tools, back into Expand, and click on the Smart version. And this can be a little hit and miss. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't work at all. That seems quite good to me. So if I click on that, it usually takes a second or two to think about it, and there we are. We've got ourselves an image with a rather different, uh, a, a different border. Now finally I'd like to show you something very different. Uh, this uses a frame I created uh, in, in Photoshop uh, and then saved to my phone. To create this border we're going to use the double exposure facility. So we go into tools, scroll down to the bottom and find double exposure. And if we look down here, this is where we can find our second picture. And if I click on that, this is where it's quite important that you've got some idea where the picture is that you want to use. I'm going to use one that I created in Photoshop and then added it to my Google Photos. Here it is. Just click on that and it adds it to the image. Now we can make some changes to that, uh, make it bigger and smaller, but we can't actually alter the shape of it. And as you can see, we have a white outline and you can see hints of the uh, background through it. Now, if we have a look here, we've got that this is actually on a layer. These are the various blending modes, and it starts with default. If we go to lighten, then all that uh, translucency around the edges disappears, and we end up with a, a rather arty border. So that's it. Using Stepsy to create borders, everything from the very simple to the uh, somewhat more complicated. I hope you enjoyed the video.